want to take the tram and go to one of the Soviet neighborhoods and look at something Soviet, something historical, something interesting. And we're gonna cross this river to get to another part of Riga, the less touristy part of Riga, in order to find something historical, uh, something new and interesting that you won't be able to find in that part of the old town, of the center. We are gonna go where no tourists really go. Можно два билета на два человека. Guess what we have here? We have a beautiful Zhiguli, old school Latvian plates, even before the uh, European Union standardized them. And you have a very beautiful car, actually pretty good condition. Umbrella in the back. And there you go, a piece of history here. Soviet building here, you know, your typical from 1964, typical communist building. It actually has a cool design, which we've never seen something like this before in Kiev. Haven't seen really anything resembling close to this, but it looks really good. It looks kind of cool uh, for, for its age, actually. It looks really good. But nevertheless, we're gonna be getting on a bus and going to a uh, very Soviet neighborhood and checking out a very, very Soviet airport that was uh, the main airport here in uh, Riga until the uh, the main Riga airport went into uh, Operation so that's gonna be really really interesting as well. All right, that's our bus okay. Where is the bus going? God damn it find this airport it's a little confusing hopefully we'll find it well yeah that is the airport you even see the uh, hammer and sickle Soviet sign over there let's go check it out check this out old-school Soviet Union era era airport you even have the uh, hammer and sickle there which you're probably not gonna find anywhere else in Latvia uh, because that was one of the first things they got rid of during the decommunization de era. <laughs> and so this is the building. They should have some um, some old airplanes here. Let's see if we can enter or maybe we have to go around. Let's see if we can enter this place. Looks like it's closed, but maybe we can go around, see if we can enter it from the other side. There's supposed to be some uh, some planes here as well to check out. And check this out, you have this old Soviet Union uh, hammer and sickle here. Maybe this is an aviation design or something to that extent. And let's see if we can find some old uh, Soviet Union planes. And there you go, you got some people over there, you got some old planes. So you got some planes there, but I don't see any Soviet Union era planes. These look like Cessna type planes, if not Cessnas themselves. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to enter it from this side as well. It should have a really cool interior, some designs. We're gonna see if we can enter it from this angle. And on this side of the building you have Riga written in Latvian. And you have Riga written in Russian, which uh, you, you're definitely not going to see anywhere else. We also have the hammer and sickle over there. And let's see if we can enter this building uh, from this side. It looks like this might not be accessible. It's closed again. So maybe this building is used by uh, somebody else now, by uh, another company or another business. But nevertheless... Знаете, а 
разговаривают. Я не из, не, не из Латвии, на русском не знать. Там надо звонить им, не знаю, а -а -а. там они есть, но а -а -а. это они так не пускают. Туда. Так не пускают, да? Mm -hmm. Хорошо, спасибо. And now we are gonna go to a Soviet era neighborhood and take a look uh, at how it looks. Is it similar to Kiev? Is it similar to Ukraine? Is it uh, nicer? Not not as nice. We're gonna check it out and see how the uh, the locals live there. Скажите, а как тут с русскими? Ну, потому что мы мы с Украины просто интересно с русскими. Тут когда заходишь и на русском говоришь, ты автоматически турист или ты можешь быть местным тоже? Я почему местный тоже? Местные тоже на русском везде говорят, да? Которые живут тут? Я на трех языках говорю. А вы местный, ну, в смысле? Я из... здесь, я коренной житель. Не, не коренной, у меня родители с Украины. А. а я родился здесь, всю жизнь прожил. А, ну. Ну, вы явно же не будете на русском везде говорить, да? Вы на... Я разговариваю на латышском в двух случаях. Если или если я на работе, или если это мне выгодно. А, -а, -а. ну вот, допустим, вы идете в ресторан, да. и там видно, что женщина явно не, не русская, допустим. Я буду смотреть по ситуации, если, а -а -а. если ну, как бы, совсем ей тяжело, а -а -а. я буду с ней говорить на ее языке, да. А если она понимает более-менее, ну, смысл мне там ну, утруждаться. Хотя я не утруждаюсь, когда ты что а вам легче на русском все-таки, да? Ну, это мой родной. Русский. русский, я думаю, я все делаю на русском, да? А, я понял. А латышский я знаю на том же самом уровне, просто он мне не родной. Ага, я понял. Короче, друзья, родители все, ну, родители, понятно, друзья, там, окружение, все на русском. Да. Ага. Ну, как окружение? Много латышей, конечно, Ну, да. Ну, ага. Были у меня такие работы, где в основном латыши были, я там с ними общался на латышском. Ага. Хотя не со всеми. Процентов есть процентов 30 националы, которые не признают вообще русский надух. Ага. С ними нельзя разговаривать на русском, иначе ну, будут конфликты. Все принципиальные националы. Ну, это как в Украине тоже такие там, есть. Да, там у вас на западной Украине. Да, да, да. У меня родня с восточной, с Мариуполя. А, ну вот. Ну, вот Мариуполь всего. -то. А, ну. Как они говорят сами, ну, пиши, э -э язык той страны, в которой человек проживает, может не знать либо гость, либо идиот. Они так говорят. Это их слова. Вот. То есть вот вам это не обязаны его знать, потому что вы не отсюда. Ну да. А вот кто же живет здесь давно, ну как мои родители, например, они живут здесь 45 лет. Отец больше. Мое мнение. Человек обязан знать язык той страны, в которой он проживает и платит налоги. Он обязан его знать. Другое дело, это его личный выбор, разговаривает он на нем или нет. Я вам назвал, какие случаи я разговариваю на русском языке. Но так, чтобы специально и себя бить в грудь и вот здесь вот вешать по оплату, я этого делать не буду. Хотя я гражданин. Так. Удачи. Looks like you can get vaccinated here. I don't know if they're gonna vaccinate me. So you have to show your ID card and then you have to go through these steps. And now we're around uh, six kilometers from the center and we are in your quintessential Soviet neighborhood with these buildings called Panelkas. You're gonna, you're gonna see them all over Ukraine, Russia, etc. etc. You have the car. The obligatory parking in the uh, in the driveway, in the entrance, uh, as you see in Ukraine all over the time. You see another car parking. This annoys the hell out of me. But yeah, this is what you kind of have here. And these are your stereotypical Soviet five-story buildings. They are in a decent condition. They look really nice. And we're only six kilometers away. And we are back in the Soviet era, and you have a car parking uh, right here, taking up the whole spot. We don't even see that in Ukraine that much. Not as often, but here every car is taking a spot in, in the driveway. And one thing you wanna, I wanna bring your attention to is, uh, it's kind of uniform, right? In Ukraine, you're gonna have different balconies, different colors, 
uh, it's gonna have a lot of crap inside but here you have these normal balconies you have these kind of nicer balconies very cool stylish balconies but on this side you're gonna have you're gonna have these uh soviet style balconies where they put the uh, they put the um uh the windows and stuff like that you see that all all over ukraine but what i like about it is kind of like the same colors right it's that same maroonish grayish color that uh you're really not gonna see it as uniform as you're seeing it here in ukraine it's the same on the other side similar colors right these maroonish maroonish balconies grayish buildings and here you have another neighborhood here you have a uh, panelka on the left hand side you have a little park here you have another panelka here kind of greenish it's a little bit greenish something that you don't really see often uh, in ukraine at least here, here you have a park you have uh, various entrances balconies stuff like that nice little road here very clean very clean park one thing that's missing here is a playground for kids and uh, a workout little outside the outdoor work area work out area uh, it's not really there but other than that it's uh, you know your typical soviet neighborhood just six kilometers uh, from the old town hey how are you hey how are you how are you how are you Good cat, nice cat. And we are exploring this neighborhood and I want to show you, take a look at this. It's like a, it's like an entrance that's, you know, it's actually done correctly. You have, um, you have this part here, you have an entrance. You also have this uh, this thing here that limits the speed. You're never going to see something like that in Ukraine. At least I haven't seen. You have this thing, you have signs. And then you have your parking. That's uh, actually designated parking. And so, yes, I mean, it's, it's a very similar uh, Soviet neighborhood. Because, you know, in all of these ex-Soviet countries, they're going to be very similar. But it's a little bit nicer. It's a little bit... Um, uh, you know, cleaner uh, than, you know, the stuff you're going to find in Ukraine or Moldova and places like that. It's a little bit more comfortable here. It's still not a, an area maybe you want to live. You probably would want to live in the center as a visitor, as a tourist, etc., etc. But for locals that are living here, it's, uh, it's kind of a comfortable environment as compared to some of the other countries. And here's another building, but I want to show you something interesting. On one hand, on one side, you have the road for cars, right? And on the other hand, on the other side, you have a little walkway for people. Okay, so cars can kind of park here. They shouldn't really be parking there. But even if they do park there, it's not annoying. It's not, um, it's not a hindrance to anybody. And then you walk in, you have your apartment. You can keep walking very, modernized in many ways this is kind of a um, it's still soviet style but it was modernized to get to a level that's closer to a more modern style right because you know cars should not be parking here they should be parking over there uh this is supposed to be kind of an entrance to the building but it's very nice with this little um this little walkway here that i've never seen in ukraine um anywhere you know, because usually you don't have any of this. You just walk from the main street. But here you have a walkway, which is actually pretty cool. You have a nice, a uh, kind of um, uh, a roof on top, which is kind of cool. So they modernized it. They actually did a great job. Like well, very clean, not a uh, no garbage at all. We reached uh, a local playground, local park, and this is a, a pretty serious park. You have track and field, you have a big uh, soccer field, you have basketball fields, you have areas to do, you know, things like gymnastics, uh, street workout, and then you have bathrooms over here. Everything is clean, organized, everything is together, everything is taken care of. Just a delight to look at.
Today is our last night here in Latvia and we are going to get or to attempt to eat some Mexican food, more specifically Tex-Mex food, which is the food that's very, very common in California, Texas. Uh, hopefully it's going to be good. А что тут происходит сегодня? Не подскажете? Что тут это? Чему посвящено? А? Это против, против. Это когда в 90-х они сделали все? Нет, 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 нет. Это просто солидарность с балтийскими странами. А. И, и все вместе против обязательно вакцинации. А, вакцинация? Ну, то есть против вообще. А. Как говорится, насильственно, ну не вообще. Ага. Это уже современное. За Против этой насильственной и ущемления прав, прав, не прав не человека. Только. Вот именно ущемление прав человека. Я понимаю. Ну хорошо, успехов вам, всего хорошего. А, uh, here's the restaurant, Tex-Mex restaurant. Summer offer. Ah, uh, this is the place. Take a look at this terrace here. We have this whole area. Here's the menu. We got the menu in Russian. You have your starters here, uh, more starters. Then you have your uh, your dishes. You have nachos here, and here you have the tacos, uh, vegetable. Uh, this is carnitas. This is actually a really nice taco. I love when I get my tacos. I either I, I either get um, the um, pork carnita something like this or the the beef one so like carne con uh, chili con carne uh, with um, beef is a, is a good option as well then you have fajitas chimichangas burritos also nice and then you have you have a taco bowl which I think is something new and I'm not sure if that's really Mexican salad soups and so I think I'm gonna be doing the tacos. I'm gonna have a couple of tacos just to try things out. I'm gonna have the carnitas and I'm gonna have the chili con carne, a little spicy here. I'm gonna try these two tacos, but or maybe I'm gonna have the burrito. Maybe the burrito or maybe the, um, the burrito with pork or beef. So we got uh, the chimichanga, the Latvian slash Tex-Mex chimichanga with two sauces, just like it's supposed to be. And I got my burrito with a sauce, with a sour cream and, uh, and the tomato-based sauce, chili sauce. so I got my taco this time I decided to give this place another shot uh, we got this taco right here let's take a look closely at what we have we have lettuce we have tomatoes we have uh, the actual meat and this is carnitas and then we have a little bit of onion and we have this one sauce we should have this couple of other sauces the red and the green sauce but we do not all right let's give it a shot all right so I'm trying this um, this taco here and um, it's kind of tasteless actually. It's just a bunch of stuff thrown in together. It has nothing to do with Mexico. It's um, just a bunch of stuff thrown in together. They gave me some sour cream. I mean, it's not bad. It's not bad, I rated like a seven. It's not terrible, but it's not the real thing. Well, that was a disappointment. I did not expect it to be so bad. Uh, I would rate it lower if this was in New York, but this is Latvia, so I gotta be, you know, I gotta give them some slack because they're so far away from Mexico. And so I would rate that place a seven. It would be a seven out of 10. It had nothing to do with Mexico. The design was good. The interior was good, but it had nothing to do with Mexico. And so I think this is gonna be the last time we're gonna be trying Mexican restaurants in Eastern Europe because they're kind of a disappointment. 
we'll have to try them in Mexico or in the United States. Look at that cool Russian helicopter over there. Really nice, huh? But this is our for now. <laughs>